kia ora. I'm going to go over how to get started in Grasshopper, which is part of Rhino 3D. So um, I'm just going to start up Rhino th uh, 7, uh, which works on both Mac and PC. Um, and we comes up with a little dialog box to either create a, a new model um, or uh, previous models that you've created. Also, there's a templates um, f option. Uh, so depending on what you're working on and what you're used to, um, it's a good idea to sort of set up the default based on what you're planning on doing. And within architecture projects in New Zealand, uh, at least, we usually sort of operate with millimeters, um, and and it's a large object. So we're going to start with with the template. Um, and that creates or opens up the Rhino window, um, which can be a little bit daunting to start with. Uh, but we'll go over the basics of how to use this and then get on to what you can do in, in SketchUp and Grasshopper. So uh, the window is split up into four, the canvas here is split up into four different views. So we have a perspective view, um, which uh, on a mouse, and I do recommend getting a three button mouse, so a button with a scroll wheel in the middle, um, it makes life a lot easier. So using the right mouse button and clicking down, we can sort of orbit around that space. Uh, then we have a top view, um, and a front and right. And if you want to switch between these, there's different sort of layouts that we can set out that you can see up here. And then in the perspective view, um, or either any of these views, you can just double tap on or double click onto there and it opens it up to full screen so you can move around quite quickly. What is useful to note down in the bottom left hand corner is this X, Y and Z, so a sort of coordinates indicator, so you know what way things are oriented. Uh, I'm just going to double click back. Um, and there's some tools here to draw with. We're not going to use these tools uh, to start with. We're going to get into Grasshopper. Um, but there's also some other tools up here along the top toolbar that allow us to um, pan and move around the spaces. So um, if I go to the hand, you can see that it uh, allows me to pan around that space, click and move. So um, it's a good idea just to be aware of, of some of these. Another one that is useful is the um, zoom extents. Uh, so we can click on that. Uh, as well. Now I'm going to open up Grasshopper, which is a uh, part of um, Rhino, but it's like another program that sort of connects into um, Rhino. So uh, we can click on this button, or we can also uh, start to type uh, Grasshopper in uh, the little dialog box. And push return and that will open and so we can see um, this creates a whole nother application really it's even got its own little uh, name up here and there's some tutorials to help you get started um, probably once you get your head around that you won't need that so you could uncheck that um, I'll leave it up for now and then there's some previous projects that I've used here. So it's quite useful to be able to just quickly open up something previously. Um, it's a good idea. There's different ways of uh, operating. Having a second screen is really beneficial so you can sort of um, make room to fit everything in because it can get a little bit condensed. Um, also there's some ways of viewing things. Um, so if we go up to view, uh, you can sort of select 
what bits that you you want to to show um, and there's draw icons and fancy wires and things so it's used worth sort of showing some of those as well what we're going to do so grasshopper is a uh, graphical programming or scripting language that allows you to draw different parts of um, geometry into a model so we're just going to start with a, a really simple um, process of building a box uh, and then another box and then sort of manipulating those and then sort of subtracting one of the boxes from the other um, and the, the power of grasshopper is that it allows you or um, parametric modeling allows you to create designs that um, you can modify really easily and change uh, and it also allows you to create amazingly uh, complex or even sophisticated uh, designs and in some cases even automate some of that process the further you you get on using it it can be definitely a little bit daunting to start with but it's just a, a matter of taking small steps and practicing and, and getting better at that so hopefully this will help you uh, do that uh, as we get along um, I'm going to start by creating everything in Grasshopper the, there are ways of connecting geometry that's already in Rhino to Grasshopper and modifying that I want you to sort of understand some of the, the basics to uh, help you sort of get a better sense of how the software works how 3d modeling works and then how you can then manipulate that um, to your advantage I have uh, a couple of plugins uh, to Grasshopper which we'll get into later for this tutorial you won't need any of those so you can just use the default uh, Grasshopper so along the top we have these different sets which uh, come and outline uh, these different components and then we have a canvas here that we can move around um, so here I'm right click clicking on the mouse and moving around so um, there's a lot of different components and it will take a long time for you to understand all of them uh, but don't worry about that just understand of the ones that you need to to start with so the way 3d software works is it's sort of uses what are called points or nodes uh, to um, identify a place in 3d space um, and also uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to construct a point so we can click here and then come or click here and then come down and place that and we can see uh, in the top in the front view here we've got this little point and it puts it to the origin so um, zero 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 so if we think of a, a graph in 2d we've got X going in that direction and then we've got Y going in that direction so zero zero and then if we come down to this view the front view we also have Z to sort of three makes it more 3d uh, going in this direction so what we can do is we can start with that coordinate um, then we want to uh, maybe create a rectangle based at zero zero so if we go up to surface and then uh, primitive and you can click there's more here so there's plane surface so we're just going to click on that and drag it down um, and then we want to use this as the plane that we're operating from so at the moment it's zero zero so that could work um, but we can sort of set the corner of that so if we drag this connection over to there we now have that and then we want to uh, add some sizes that we can change 
And we do that by adding a slider. So if we go up to the params folder, there's these input devices. So there's one here, number slider. So we can click on that and bring that down. And that by default uh, gives us a number slider between zero and one. So if we draw that up into there, so we can see now if we change that, it's probably not going to see. So we're going to need to, not going to be able to see that because we're too far out. So we could come over here and zoom in. We'll zoom in. And so we can see here now that we can control that. But because we're operating at such a small scale, it's not sort of ideal. So I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to, um, in this case, delete this one. So there's multiple ways to do the same thing. So I've just clicked on it and delete. I'm just going to double click, left click into the onto the canvas and it comes up with a little search icon um, where you can type uh, in a component that you want. In this case, there's some shortcuts to this. So I'm going to do uh, one that is maybe, say, 3,000, so 3,000 millimeters or, or three meters. So I've put that in there and then now I can drag that back to the X. And so we can see that red line start to, to come across. So I want to copy this. Um, so by clicking on it, I can um, use start to drag it and push the option key on a Mac or uh, the alt key, I think, on the PC and it will just copy that straight over. So then I've got another one. Then I can put that up into to the Y uh, size. So now you can see that we've created this square, which is great. It's a little bit complicated to do that just to create a square. But the benefit of doing this, it allows us to um, change that, uh, the dimensions of that shape. So we can uh, move that. So we've got a base. So here, when I click on one of these components, it highlights green in the um, in the Rhino view. So if I click on the plane, that now um, shows us that rectangle or plane that we've just created. Um, I'm just going to adjust. So you, there's different ways of operating, but I'm just going to bring this across so we can also see that in 3D. So um, we've got this 3D view as well. So we've got a plan or top view, front, right, and uh, perspective view. And when we click on a component in the Grasshopper canvas, it highlights green here so we can see it. Now we want to make this into a box, so we want to extrude that. So um, with Grasshopper, there's lots of ways uh, to do this. This is sort of a, a simple way. Um, so we're just going to double click and type extrude. And as you can see, there's lots of different extrudes along there. Uh, I'm just going to click this one, which is a little uh, um, arrow sort of pointing up. So, so what we've got here, I'll just turn this on. This is a little... Uh, thing that helps a little plugin that helps you explain what each of these are so you can go back and find them easily uh, or just type in what they are in the search so now I can take this plane that we've we've created and add that to the extrude and then we've got this direction so the way the extrude operates it doesn't know which way you want to extrude so we need to um, give it a number. So if we copy one of these, so option or or alt, oh, not there. Yeah, click first and then move it like that. Or you can just copy and paste. And if I take that directly into there, you can see some colors sort of happening. So that's gone red. So that means there's a problem. So just putting a number directly into that direction means it's not going to work. So if I um, undo that and it's it's currently orange so that means it's not there's some sort of problem 
but it's okay. Um, so we can fix that. When I added this directly in, it said there's an error and we'll have to deal with that because it's not going to work. So we need to tell it which direction we want it to extrude in. So the easiest way to do that is just double click on the canvas and type Z because we want it to go up. Um, remember the little axis that we had before. So we want it to go up. So we've got the Z figure there. So we just tell it which direction we want it to go in. So if we drag uh, the number slider uh, into that and then replace the line that we had before uh, into the direction, we now have um, uh, a box. And you can see that the extrude function has um, gone light gray so that red is not a problem so we can adjust all of these really quickly um, as a way of making a box i'm going to stop there uh, to give you a break and the next tutorial will be about how to create another box and that we can uh, intersect with that one.